Hey there guys, Nitterberg here, hope you've been doing well. Welcome to the fourth video of the MTCNA playlist where we will be looking at the default configuration for a router board or more basically a, a Microtik router or a Microtik access point. So this is gonna be a fun little video. One extra thing I want to add is on this day today, Microtik has actually released their beta version for Winbox version four which I'm going to use going forward. And you'll also see how this works in all the upcoming videos, but I, I believe Microtik will want to make their own video covering the subject as well, which I'm looking forward to. But this is awesome. You're gonna see how cool Winbox is. And what I really love is that this is native for Mac OS and Linux now. So more people can join us in the amazing journey of using Winbox as an administration tool. So let's get into the video and learn a little bit more about the default configuration. So firstly, again, this is the forum post that I saw by Normus, just showcasing that the amazing new version of Winbox is finally pretty much around the corner. It's still beta build. You need to download it directly. It's not on the Microtik website yet. If you go to the Microtik dropdowns for the software, it's not there yet. You download it directly from this download link, but it's really cool. Look at what it looks like. <laughs> this is so nice. It looks so modern almost, but it still has the same functionality. It still allows you to see your neighbors. You can quickly access it using a MAC address or an IP address, and you can just fill in your login credentials. Now I did factory reset this HAP AX3 that I happen to be using in my office as well that I use to connect this. So you can see what the default configuration looks like. So I'm just going to grab this MAC address quickly and connect to it, although I did keep my normal user. So again, if you are logging in for the first time, just find the little placard or sticker or something that has the login details. Otherwise your password might be blank. But the first time you connect, it might look something like this. So you will get a prompt to just let you know, hey, the Marketic is running a router OS default configuration. And it's telling you a little bit about what's happening. Um, so it's just saying, hey, you need to maybe just set a strong password for your user account. You maybe need to do a software upgrade, just some basic stuff that you need to understand or follow along with. But it's nice that you get this very basic setup information about what's happening with your Microtik. And it's also giving you the script in detail. So it's telling you exactly what the Microtik has been configured for. Here you can see it's this is the script. This is what it's doing. You could actually take the script and put it in a text file or a code editor or something like Visual Studio Code and reverse engineer it a bit and maybe edit it around to fit your own needs. And then you could run your own script to make the marketing do what you want it to do the first time you boot it up, which is really cool. But let's leave the default configuration running and just talk a little bit about what it does. So I'm just going to hit OK. For the most part, what you need to understand when you log on to your marketing for the first time is that it running this default configuration and it is being stored in the system itself. So this isn't something that you could just find in the file system and delete. If we go to the files, it's not going to be here. So you can't accidentally go and delete the default configuration, which is nice. And think of it almost as a rescue configuration as well. So if there was some reason that you had to factory reset the market tick, it gives it a way to just fill in some basic configuration. And if you want to see what the configuration is doing without getting that pop-up pop up again, because you just get it the first time you log on with Winbox. Then you could actually also just go into your terminal quickly. And then from the terminal, we could actually go into the system, default configuration, and you could print this. And this gives you the default configuration, pretty much what that prompt was giving us. It's telling you exactly what's happening. And again, you could copy all of this, paste it into a text file and just properly see what's happening. But in essence, what I want you to think of uh, the default configuration doing is, it's going to basically be setting your ethernet one as a WAN interface so that it can pick up an IP address from DHCP. It's going to bundle all of the remaining other interfaces as well as any wireless interfaces since this is a HAP I'm using. It's going to bridge that into, think of it as one big switch almost. And then it's going to have this default IP address, it's going to run a basic DHCP server, and it's also going to have some firewall rules. So let's just quickly walk through all of the configuration to see where what is. And this is also kind of a great 
showcase of where things are in Winbox as well. So let's just quickly look at the main points or the main things that the default configuration has actually configured on our Microtik. That being our interfaces, an interface list, some IP settings, DHCP client and server, and then last but not least, some firewall rules just for good measure to protect our network from some malicious behavior. Now you don't need to take everything in. I'm, I'm not going to explain everything in great detail in this video specifically, because we will cover things individually when we do set up the HCP servers, when we do set up our own firewall rules. But it's nice to just get an overview of what the default configuration has actually done to your Microtech. So when we come into our interfaces, we will see there's a list of all of our physical interfaces, as well as a bridge, a loopback address, as well as our wireless interfaces. So this is quite nice to just get an overview of where what is. But the cool thing with Microtech is if we click on this little drop down arrow, which they've changed with this new version of Winbox, we can go to our interface list. And then from the interface list, here's a very important tip to note whatever is default configuration. Microtech will comment all default configuration elements or objects in the configuration with this defconf comment, this defconf statement. So it's easy to identify what Microtech is set up versus anything that you might have configured yourself. So we can see there is a LAN interface list and a WAN interface list. Now I'll cover the interface lists in better detail when we actually configure them ourselves as well. But I want you to think of these as different zones or a way that you can group various interfaces together so that you could reference a list. So a whole group of devices or ports or interfaces as opposed to just a single interface. That's what makes interface lists so powerful and popular. The next big thing that I wanna have a look at is the bridge quickly because this is going to be where we, we've actually set up our bridge ports. So if I go and drill down to the ports section we can actually see it's showing us this is all the default configuration and it's bridged all of these interfaces together so that they're part of that single bridge so that they're kind of like working as a single switch. Now this is important because this means that any device that I connect either on wireless or on any of the interfaces on this Microtech, if it's running the HCP on that bridge and they get IP addresses automatically, they, they can just start talking to each other and working and the network will be up and running. Which leads us to the next big configuration statement or stuff that Microtech has done is they've actually configured some basic IP addressing on this device. So if we look at our IP addresses, the only thing that they've really configured is this 192.168.88.1 slash 24 IP. Now this is the default IP that Microtech tends to use for all of their router boards and haps and whatnot, just so that you have a quick way to get onto the Microtech for management and administration purposes so that you can just put that into your Winbox session. And if you've obtained an IP from the DHCP server, you can connect to it directly via 88.1. So the other big thing that the Microtech is doing is DHCP. And we can have a look at our IP and DHCP settings. So two main things we wanna look at is our DHCP client and our DHCP server. So a DHCP client is obviously where you're telling an interface or a bridge that it's supposed to obtain an IP address from a DHCP server. So it's actively going to be requesting an IP address. This interface, Ether1, let's just drill down into it quickly. We can see it is for Ether1. It is part of the default configuration. It's been set to add a default route and it is using the peer DNS and NTP, which is nice because this means we're automatically getting DNS and time and all that really valuable settings that we just want from a DHCP server. But the big part is this is what's actually just making this Microtech be plug and play. The moment I plug it in, which it is, it's inside my normal ISP's equipment at home. If I go into this Microtech and I open up a terminal window now, this is just running the default configuration. It's already got internet access out. I can ping out to the internet. My computer is also connected to this Microtech and it's got internet access as well. And this is just running a default configuration. So that's great because that means it is pretty much a plug and play configuration. You could even plug this into your work network, although I wouldn't recommend just doing that. Please first talk to your IT admins and see what type of requirements there might be because maybe you might unintentionally plug the wrong port into the network and then your Microtech is sending out DHCP offers to the network and you've accidentally become a man in the middle DHCP attack thing. So, <laughs> please first check with your IT guys if you do want to plug this into like your office environment, maybe set up a little test lab for it if, if you really want to 
get onto the marketing so quickly, but at home, pretty much you can plug this into your current internet provider's equipment and it should just come up and you can play around with and see what it's actually doing, how everything works. Then if we look at the IP DHCP server, we can see it is also acting as a DHCP server where it's handing out DHCP IP addresses inside that 192.168.88.0/24 range. Like this is what the DHCP server is doing. And then the last bit of big configuration is the firewall rules. Now this is very important because a firewall is as strong as what your network is going to be. If you're not running any firewall, then that potentially means that malicious people can more easily access your network and do a lot of bad things. So that is why Microsoft kind of recommends using the default configuration because their firewall rules are pretty, pretty good. Pretty, I'm not gonna say 100% airtight, but they're set up in such a way where it's going to restrict access from the WAN, just trying to get into your internal network, but your internal network will be able to get out to the internet just fine. So that is kind of where Marketix default rules excel. It also just does a little speed up process and just makes everything flow a lot better. And that is what the default firewall rules will do. We will cover all of these rules in a lot more and greater detail when we actually configure firewall rules ourselves on RouterOS. This is just a means of showcasing what the default configuration is doing. It is an awesome piece of just basic configuration that Microtech loads onto their devices. It is stored in the system separately. So if you ever need to factory reset, it's easy to load up again and just get back into work again. So that is kind of like the beauty of the default configuration. It's simple, but it's powerful as well. So this is going to be where I end off the video. In the next few videos, we will be covering a few more nuances, especially stuff like the new Winbox. I really wanna get more into this. We'll also be looking at the command line interface, like how to properly navigate through the command line. And then we'll look at some of the more cooler things like how to factory reset your MicroTix, set a name for it. You know, all of the cool things like the packages. There's so many different things that you can do with the packages and how they operate on the MicroTix system. So that is something to look forward to. But for now, I'll leave you guys to it. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.